Our next speaker is going to talk on the topic of um, courage and in particular stepping out of your, your comfort zone and dealing with those surprises. Please welcome back, uh, she spoke yesterday, welcome back Jenny Lincoln. Thanks Ian. So yesterday we bore witness to a lot of courage, didn't we? Every single speaker that got up here demonstrated courage. And I'm not just talking about the courage to get up here and to share your story and your wisdom and your insights. They shared how every single moment of every single day they were stepping out of their comfort zone and into their courage zone. And because they did that every day, it became their new normal. And that's a very powerful thing. So this morning, I want to talk to you about how I can help you move from your courage zone into your comfort zone. Now, I actually want to start with the topic of regret, right? Because regret is a very, very, very powerful motivator. What do you think the number one regret is in life? Have a think. It's not far from that. Yeah? Absolutely. You're right on the money there. There's a wonderful lady who was a palliative nurse. Her name was Bonnie Ware, and she's written a, a book called The Regrets of the Dying. I suggest you have a read of it. It's very, very inspiring. And she tells us that the number one regret is, I wish I had the courage to live a life that was true to me, not a life that was full of the expectations of others. So let me say that again. I wish I had lived a life of courage that allowed me to live my life true to me, not true to the expectations of others. So I want to ask this question of you right here, right now. Which life are you living? Are you living the life that's true to you? Or are you living the life of expectations of others of you? Or maybe you're straddling both. You're trying to transition from one to the other. So what I want to do this morning is I actually want to give you three techniques that's going to help you move that way. Now, it's interesting that we always talk about the comfort zone, don't we? But then we don't label what all that other stuff is out there. It's just called uncertainty and unknown. So I actually like to put a label around it because our left brains are very cognitive and they like to label things. And when we label something, it gives us comfort. So I call it the courage zone. So when we're not in our comfort zones, we're in our courage zones. Um, around the comfort zone, there is something that I call sharp edges. This is where those five Ds hang out. Can anyone remember the five Ds from yesterday? Different, difficult, discomfort, doubt, disappointment. Boom, boom. Yeah, you know what? They are very powerful emotions and they're the things that we have to jump over to move from our comfort zone to our courage zone. Now, the thing is, because they're full of emotions, and can you remember from yesterday, emotions are just what? Yeah, they're just energy in motion. They're there to transfer through us. They're, we're meant to feel them and then we free them. But guess what? When we're in a place of fear and doubt, we tend to stifle them. And what happens? We get this disturbia within us and then someone comes along and pushes one of our buttons and we get triggered. Now, that might be just a little flush of energy. You might feel some tension rising in within you. But if you keep getting triggered all the time, guess what happens? All of a sudden, you go from a one to a three and then to a seven and then kaboom, it's like a volcano. You lose it. And that losing it could be externally or it could be an implosion. You could lose it internally. So the sharp edges are very powerful. 
When we get triggered in these sharp edges, it's really good. You actually want to acknowledge it and you want to say, my God, yay, I'm being triggered. I know that sounds a bit weird. But you know what? The trigger is a message. It's telling you, you are on the edge of your comfort zone. You, girl or guy, are about to grow. So take that next step. Get curious. Don't judge it. Get curious around what's triggering me and what is it telling me. Because opportunity, freedom, the love of life is what dwells in the courage zone. Okay? Now... I would like to share very quickly my four sharp edges that I had five years ago before I started house sitting. Thank you, Nat and Jody. They put me on this path like they have for many people. And my sharp edges were fear of spiders, fear of heights, fear of getting lost, and a fear of the unknown because I came from 30 years of corporate strategy where we planned for everything, right? We had a scenario for everything. But the beauty about it is now, I don't want to know. I want life to unfold like a rose. Oh, funny that, I'm wearing a rose. Um, But I want it to unfold like a flower. I don't want to get ahead of myself anymore because when I get ahead of myself and I try and work out what's going to come next, way, way down the path, I get overwhelmed. So now I let go of that. I let go of the steering wheel. I hold my mission in my mind and in my heart, most importantly in my heart, and I know what I love and I focus on that. So that has given me the freedom to just allow life to unfold. And you know what the beauty about that? is is that every day is a, a gift, you know? It, it's full of surprise and delight, which is wonderful. Now, I don't have this fear of getting lost anymore. I actually think that came because when I left five years ago, I actually left with a partner of 21 years. Two years ago, we realised we were not going to spend the next 50 years to, together because we just realised we were so different. So both of us actually had to have the courage to step into that space and make a very difficult decision. Now, I still love my past partner very dearly and she still loves me, but we're not meant to be together. And it was really hard to actually make that decision and to see that our relationship had come full circle. But you know what? When you step into the courage zone, you can actually make some very tough decisions. And one of the once you get through all the grief and the trauma and the devastation and the, you know you break up and you break down and you're an awful mess and but anyway you've just got to go through it you have to feel it to free it. Um, but when when I came out of that I realised that I was actually restricted because I was holding space for the security not just of me but for my partner. So every time we'd jump on a motorbike and go exploring on some island or some bloody dirt road up a hill or something like that, and all of a sudden, you know, nightfall starts or a bloody tropical rainstorm starts or something like that, and the waters turn, I mean, the sandy road turns to a liquid pool of mud, and I'm thinking, oh my God, where are we? How do we get back? I don't hold that responsibility for another any longer. I just hold the responsibility for me and I know what I'm capable of and I know what I, where I am confident in. And so you know what? Now I have the opposite res, uh, relationship with getting lost. I actually want to get lost. It is the most liberating experience because when you get lost, you know what happens? You get found, right? How many times have you been travelling and a generous stranger comes up to you and helps you find your way. That is a really important metaphor because when we get lost emotionally, we get found, we find a really deep part of ourselves. And that discovery is so important. That discovery is the very cellular structure of what courage is. That's what makes us brave. And it was interesting, Michelle last night said to me, reminded me of a comment that we get really, really often. People say to us, 
G, you're brave. But you know what? We aren't really. All we're doing is that each day we're putting ourselves out there, we're stepping into the space, living the life of design that Ian suggested to us yesterday. And we're just taking little imperfect actions to do that. And every time we do, we are building that courage muscle, which is really wonderful. Now, I'm going to just give a spider alert here, right? So if anyone has a fear of spiders, then um, I would suggest that you look away now because one very large spider is going to feature in two photos. So, before I set off house sitting, I knew I wanted to go to Central and South America. And guess who lives in Central and South America? The tarantula. And so I started to psych myself and I realised there was going to be a moment where I was going to come face to face with a tarantula. And you know what? I really wanted to because I was really starting to feel the restrictions of my fears. Travel helped me realise that. And so the spider became a really big metaphor for me. If I could do the tarantula, then I could do anything, right? That was like me jumping out of a plane. Yet to do that, I will. I said I was going to do it on my 50th. I didn't. I'll do it on my 60th. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm visiting the ru ruins of Tikal and Guatemala. And uh, my guide says to me, I've got something special for you. Oh, well, you know what? My subconscious knew. It just knew. My, you know when you go on one of those roller coasters or that old pirate ship? You know how you lose your stomach at the top right there? Well, mine, lost. I, I just totally lost my stomach. I thought I was going to be ill. My knees were going like this. And I was going, yeah, yeah, I really want to do this. You know, my body language was giving all totally conflicting signs. But, 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 my heart was saying, you've got this girl. You can do this. But the thing was, the other powerful thing behind that was that I knew if I didn't, I didn't know how I was going to face myself. You know, I don't think I could have really lived with myself. Imagine me, this big creature here, being scared of something like that. Now, I know they're a bit hairy looking and all of that, but they're small. You know, I could crush her. But, hey, fear's irrational, isn't it? So, I look at this spider. I don't know whether she's looking at me with her thousands of eyes, but surely she is. <laughs> and... I put my hand out and it's going like this, yeah, I can take it. And the guy's trying to put the spider on my hand and I realised something really, really important, that I needed someone to hold my hand. We all need someone to hold our hands when we step into the space of courage, whether it's physically or whether it's, you know, emotionally and spiritually. And I, so I put my hand on his arm and I said... If I do that, will she walk up onto my arm? And he said, yeah, she will. So I held his hand and then she made her way up my arm. Then the most magical thing happened. The first thing I thought, the first thing that registered in my mind was, my God, she's so heavy. Like my hand just wanted to drop. They're really heavy spiders. And then the light just shone on those big long hairs and she just stood there, thankfully, because she actually kept on moving. That would have really freaked me out. <laughs> but she, sh she stood still for me. And I just, I fell in love with her. Her beauty absolutely, totally enamoured me. I don't know if an enamoured me is actually a correct phrase, but I'm going to use it anyway. Um, you know, and she captivated me. And that's what I was talking about yesterday with the power of wow, the power of wonderment. I just felt this really special connection with her. She felt gentle. You know, I always looked at spiders and thought they were scary and aggressive. She was really gentle and she just stood there and I could feel her energy. It was just the most magical moment. And so she really helped me through her beauty and that power well, really helped me move through my fear. Now, 
So, so I don't have the same fear I have around spiders. But I'm telling you, if I woke up and I had a tarantula sitting right here, I'd still freak out, right? Maybe a little less, I'd be able to deal with it, but I would still freak out. So I just wanted to share that because dealing with that spider was, that, that was just a pivotal moment in my life, right? And where she, where she walked up and down, I now have a tattoo. It's a phoenix rising. And the words are, I trust in the knowing of my own love. Because that's actually what got me to that place. Because I, before I was judging myself really harshly and I thought, you know what, I'm going to give myself some soft eyes. I'm actually going to give, cut myself a break and I just, I know I'm going to do it. I'm not sure how, but I'm gonna, I know I'm going to do it. And I know through trusting my own love, I'm going to actually be able to rise out of my fear. And that's what I did. And so now I wear her, because I didn't really want a tattoo of a spider. <laughs> Sorry, darling, I know we had a lovely connection, but I thought maybe a phoenix rising was just a little nicer thing to wake up to in the morning. So anyway, let's get on to some tips. So the three tips that I want to give you are around getting comfortable, the first one is about developing the courage muscle. So one of my favourite mantras is, courage is like a muscle, it needs a daily workout, right? It's just like anything, it's about creating muscle memory, not just physically, but emotionally. And so if you think about doing squats, right? When we sit here doing squats, the first few are just like, oh my God, that feels awful, do I really have to do 300 of these? And, but once you get into the rhythm of it, and the momentum of it, it actually becomes really easy. You don't even realise that you're building muscle capacity. And that's what happens when you're house sitting. When you step into somebody else's life and you pick up what they're doing on a day-by-day -day basis, you're doing these little small and perfect actions which creates momentum which builds muscle. So remember, courage is like a muscle. It needs a daily workout. So how are you going to give it a daily workout when you leave this room? It can just be simple little things. The second thing, the tip I want to give you is about getting comfortable in your discomfort, right? Because discomfort is the very thing that defines those sharp edges. Discomfort, I want to use an actual, I'm going to use a yoga pose, but discomfort creates all this tightness and pain. And normally when we feel this tightness and pain and discomfort, we want to shrink away from something. But if we think about a great yoga pose, what do we do? We actually, we stretch into the pose and we can do one of two things. You can, either you can either breathe in and stretch further into the pose or you can pull out because of the discomfort and the pain. And it's exactly the same with emotional posturing. We, when we enter into emotional postures, we can either stretch into it and when you do that, you're actually stretching into the unknown parts of you. You're going to find a different part of yourself. So I suggest to you when you feel that tightness and you have that hesitation or that desire to pull back, instead think yoga, I'm going to stretch into that part. And the way you do that is like in yoga, you, when you're in a difficult uh, pose or even when you're stretching after a, a sports workout, you breathe into the area of pain and discomfort. And when you breathe into the area of pain and discomfort, your body does this wonderful thing. It flushes that area with a lot of oxygenated blood. And so when you experience emotional and mental discomfort, it's the same thing. You breathe, breathe into it, breathe out, okay? And one of the good things about getting through discomfort is that we can use our, I always have problems saying this word, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to say it, physiological, yep. I think I got it. You can use your fidget... Oh, see, I can't say it now. <laughs> you can use your physiological uh, cues and triggers. So I used to train in, with amateur boxers when I was back in Sydney in a boxing gym. And one of the things that the tips that my coach gave me was that if you're there working out and you're sucking in air going... <gasps> then you're telling your body that you're in panic, right? But if you're in through your nose, out through your mouth, in through your nose, out through your mouth, then you're giving a different signal 
to your body and all of a sudden your body thinks, oh, it's in control. And so it starts to calm down all the panic, the fight, flight, freeze responses. So that's a good thing to remember. And the last uh, thing to remember about our physiology is that if you're feeling tightness, it's really wonderful to be able to open up your heart space. I talk about heart a lot, but the heart is the biggest energy valve in your body. And if you can open it, then you allow energy to flow in. And then that helps release all the tension and the emotions that you are stifling within you. And so the prompt there is actually, I like to play with words, shite. So when you're feeling shite, <laughs> sorry Ian, I hope that's okay, um, remember to open your shoulders, breathe into your heart space, inhale, pull up your throat because guess what? You know when we're feeling defensive, we're like dogs and animals, we actually protect all of our um, vital organs. So if you open yourself up, you're telling your body there is nothing to be scared about, right? And then soft eyes, don't judge yourself. And the most important thing, which actually has a really big impact on you, is smile at yourself. It's amazing what you feel when you smile at yourself. And the last thing that I want to talk about is a really quick and simple reframe. One of the biggest excuses or problems that we have when uh, we're embarking into something new is this thing called responsibility. And I was talking about it a bit when you know I was in my past partnering relationship. And the word responsibility is actually made up of two words. Response, ability. Sorry, get ahead of myself, catch up. It's made up of two words, response, ability. Now, if we think about responsibility, we actually feel like it a bird as it a burden. But if you reframe it and go, you know what? Responsibility is my actual ability to respond in the moment. Psychologically, that feels lighter, right? And then if you take it one step further and say, responsibility is actually my response capability, all of a sudden you're going, ooh, hey, I like responsibility because it's all about my capability. And the reason why this is such a powerful reframe and a really good one to use is that response capability is all about movement and flow. It's a bit like when you want to build muscle uh, or muscle strength. You, instead of doing really long, uh, heavy reps, you want to do, you want to lighten the workload and you actually want to do quick repetitions. That's the best way to build uh, momentum. And that's exactly the same with responsibility. If you feel the lightness that comes with response, um, your, your response ability or your ability to respond, it's much better than carrying that big load of weight that feels that you feel when you have responsibility. So that's it for me this morning. I've given you three tips around courage is like a muscle, it needs a daily workout. So think about how you're going to include it in your day and get comfortable in your discomfort. Discomfort really is just an emotion, it's energy in motion. So, you know, it's not as scary as it needs to be. And when you start to feel, oh, I'm burdened and stopped by my responsibilities, reframe it and say, you know what, it's my response capability, which means I don't necessarily have to do it myself. I could actually get somebody else to do it too. So that's a pretty good feeling, I think. So thank you very much for your attention this morning and I'll see you throughout the day. Have a wonderful day.